The greatest threat to health in this millennium is wireless technologies without a doubt. What do I mean by wireless technologies? Well, wireless technologies are microwave ovens, cell phones, baby monitors, and Bluetooth. If you look at the health of the cell, the most important thing about the cell is a cellular membrane. And there's receptor sites on the cellular membrane. And these receptor sites literally keep bacteria out, viruses out, and they keep microwaves out. And what happens is when the microwaves start to come into the cell, the receptor sites shut down. And it's literally saying, stay out because you're toxic. What happens though, is we're exposed to the wireless forever. We drive along the highway, we encounter cell phone towers, we use our cell phones, we use computers. There's people that talk in restaurants and on airplanes and everybody has cell phones. So the problem is you can't escape the wireless. So here's what happens, in sensitive people, and there's a lot of sensitive people out there, we're seeing a lot of chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia syndromes, we have no idea why they're caused, they're caused by electropollution. Because after the, the cells become shut down from the wireless, when they shut down, they don't allow the wireless to come in, but they keep hormones out, they keep vitamins out, they keep minerals out, and waste products stay in the cell. So the cell ages prematurely. When that happens, there's an influx of bacteria, we call them microbes, into the cell. And then the voltage of the cell goes down and it becomes sick. This is why our bodies get sick. Heavy metals will do it, trans fats will do it, chemicals will do it, but wireless is the number one cause of inflammation of these cells. And when this happens, people get sick. So they go to the doctor saying, oh, I'm wireless. No, they don't say that. They come in and say, I have headache. I have chronic fatigue syndrome. My muscles are screaming. I have no energy. I have heart disease. I have cancer. This is what the wireless causes over time. How do you fix it? Awareness is curative. You must determine if you're being exposed to wireless. How do you find out? Well, here in this table, I have an electrosmog detector. I'm being photographed right now and I'm being mic'd. And this is the background. Look what happens when I bring my mic. That's a wireless, folks. Now, that's pretty bad. I don't have it next to my heart. I have it, you know, close to my body, but it's not affecting my internal organs. Down here, it's affecting, it's affecting me, and you can hear that. But that's a wireless device. Now, if I was lecturing in front of you in the audience, I certainly would not put this next to my heart, which a lot of people do. As a heart specialist, you're, you're treading dangerous waters. Now, what else does the wireless affect? This is an unhealthy phone. You can hear it. This is radiation. Now, look, I can't get away from this phone. My arms need to be 60 feet long to get away from this. This whole room is being toxic. I gotta shut this off. I'm shutting this off, basically, because this is poisoning my body and everybody in the room. There is research to show that cell phones are the most common cause of tinnitus. What is tinnitus? It's ringing in the ears. The most common cause of deafness. And in Europe, in Europe, cell phones are outlawed in the Scandinavian countries because scientists have determined that in children ages 5 to 18 have a much higher incidence of brain cancer than their age-controlled counterparts. Dr. Davis, you said in your testimony, again, following up on this, is that you said that Interphone has studied people who use phones heavily for a decade, has found that where persons have used phones heavily for a decade or longer, there is evidence of significantly increased risk, literally a doubled risk of malignant brain tumors. The one researcher to have studied young people who began using cell phones as teenagers, Professor Leonard Hardell of Sweden, has found that those who started to use cell phones heavily before age 20 have four to six times more brain tumors by the time they reach their 30s. Um, can we get some documentation on that study? Um, absolutely. In fact, I want to also tell you, unfortunately, that there has been a history here that I think we need to recognize. When Professor Henry Lai and Singh developed the pioneering new technique for measuring DNA damage called the Comet assay that shows you a tail of DNA when it's damaged. When they developed that assay in 1994, they showed that radio frequency exposure to brain cells of the rat could be damaging in terms of the Comet assay. The industry response, which has been documented and is in my book as well as other places, was this. First, they went to NIH and tried to get their funding revoked. Then, they went to the journal that had accepted the article for publication. Who, and tried who, who they? The industry 
working against seeing this work published. Then the same lobbyists tried to get the article unaccepted in a journal where it had been accepted. And finally, they hired other scientists to do advocacy research to try to invalidate the science. And when those scientists actually confirmed the work, it was never published. What is the strongest evidence you have that exposure to a cell phone causes cancer? The work that's been done on the comet assay that shows double strand breaks in DNA after exposure to cell phone radiation is very strong evidence experimentally. If we tie that with the human studies of Dr. Sudetsky and others that have looked at people who have 10 years of exposure or more, we put that together and we have strong evidence. What are the symptoms? The five most common ones include problems with the skin, problems with the brain, fatigue, um, pain and chest issues with, with the heart. The less common symptoms are nausea, panic attacks or depression, seizures, uh, ringing in the ears, ear pain, numbness, paralysis, dizziness and balance problems. Wi-Fi radiation is not safe. It promotes tumors in rats. It affects sperm motility and viability. It causes DNA damage. It causes rouleau formation of the blood. It, de it contributes to headaches, dizziness, nausea, weakness and concentration problems. It causes arrhythmia and tachycardia. It damages the heart. It may cause heart irregularities in as many as 1 in 700 students. If half an hour a day exposure to cell phones contributes to brain tumors, can we be so sure that six hours of exposure to Wi-Fi in schools is safe? How much confidence do we have in the system when exposure exceeded guidelines in one school where the students are complaining of headaches and heart problems and nothing has been done about it? What does the future hold? If we do nothing, if the Wi-Fi goes into schools, if we have WiMAX coming into communities, if smart meters and everything else, we are going to make a heck of a lot more people ill. If we do something, if we lower the guidelines, if we have wired routers in schools, if we establish radio frequency free zones, uh, re-question smart meters and broadband over power lines, use clean light bulbs and clean appliances, we can actually improve the situation uh, considerably. If you care about the health of students and teachers, share this video. And if you have Wi-Fi at home, consider replacing it with a wired connection. Ask your neighbors to do the same. Thank you.